Hey guys, and welcome to another session. Today we're talking about geography of Texas, the various regions in Texas. So let's get started. Okay, so Texas is a very large state. Due to its size and geographic location, Texas is unique among all the states. It covers 266,000 square miles and it's second only to Alaska. It's a massive state in, as a landmass. The state has an impressive topographic diversity, including 91 mountain peaks that are a mile or more high. Now, before we dive into the geographic regions, let's get some terminology. What are woodlands? What are savannas and what are prairies? We'll come across multiple such connotations over this presentation. So woodlands are um, a habitat with widely spaced trees and continuous understory of grasses and shrubs. So a lot of trees densely packed. Uh, that's kind of what a woodland would look like. But in case of woodlands, it's not like an Amazon uh, jungle, the, the sunlight can actually reach the ground. Now, what are savannas? Savanna is a grassland with scattered trees and shrubs. Trees are sparse enough that grasses dominate and fire or drought limits dense forest growth. Um, what are prairies? Now, generally, as we go from wooded areas in the east of Texas towards the West Texas, you will see that the vegetation go, goes from woodlands, heavy piney woods towards savannas, which, which has scattered trees, and then eventually goes down to prairies. And a prairie is a treeless or nearly treeless grassland dominated entirely by grasses and wildflowers, found mostly in the temperate regions, especially towards the central North America. And you see that as you come towards the, the Western side, of Texas, you will start to see prairies and eventually get into the um, the higher plateau regions and the, the hills coming in on the western side of Texas. So with that overview and with these um, terminologies, let's now dive into the various regions of Texas. All right, so the very first one is the Piney Woods and they are towards the east, the easternmost uh, end of the state, this region is the piney woods. Now the rolling terrain covered with pines and oaks and rich bottomlands with tall hardwoods characterize the forests of the East Texas piney woods. This has a lot of rainfall, annual rainfall averages from 36 to 50 inches and is fairly uniformly distributed throughout the year. Uh, humidity and temperatures are typically high. So with all this rain falling, the vegetation is very lush and green, and you would see a lot of uh, these hardwoods in this region, which is very, um, you know, rare to see in the western part of the Texas. Elevations, now elevations range from 200 to 500 feet above the sea level, so not very high as compared to some of the western parts of Texas, like Edwards Plateau. Um, so that is all about piney woods. Let's now move on to the Gulf Prairies, which is this region near the Gulf Coast. Now the Gulf Coast Prairies and marsh regions is nearly level, slowly drained plain, less than 150 feet in elevation, dissected by streams and rivers flowing into the Gulf of Mexico. Right? The region includes Barrier Island along the coast, saltgrass marshes surrounding bays and estuaries, and the remnant of the tall grass prairies, Oakland, uh, oak parklands and oak marts scattered along the coast and tall woodlands in the river bottomlands. A lot of words, but in a sense, this is a region which has more or less like a prairie kind of vegetation, not a lot of trees, right? But there, there are certain kinds of trees that are, that are prevalent here and you would find mostly um, oaks, different kinds of oaks. Average rainfall varies from 30 to 50 inches per year, distributed fairly uniformly throughout the year. So that is your um, second region of Texas that we have described, which is the Gulf Prairies. 
let's move on. And the next one we talk about is post oak savanna. Post oak savanna, it seems to be, you know, uh, deriving its name from the post oak tree, which dominates the region and the savanna like landscape of grasslands with scattered trees, like we described earlier in our terminology section. Average annual rainfall averages from 28 to 40 inches per year, and the landscape of the region is gently rolling to hilly, and the elevations range from 300 to 800 feet above sea level. So now we are beginning to see some of that Western Texas come in, uh, and you can see the elevations are getting to about 1,000 feet above sea level. Still not very high, but you're beginning to see that the land is generally sloping upwards. So that is the post oak savanna. Now the next one to talk about is the blackland prairie. Just next um, to the previous one is the blackland prairie. The blackland prairie region is named for the deep fertile black soils that characterize the area. Blackland prairie soils once supported a tall grass prairie dominated by tall growing grasses such as big blue stem, little blue stem, Indian grass, and switchgrass. Because of the fertile soils, much of the original prairie has been plowed to produce food and forage crops. The average annual rainfall ranges from 28 to 40 inches. So still a lot of rain falling throughout the year. The landscape is gently rolling to nearly level and elevations range from 300 to 800, which is very similar to the post oak. All right, so the next one after Blackland Prairie, the bordering that is the Cross Timbers. And the Cross Timbers region spans parts of central and north central Texas and extends into Oklahoma. It served as a natural barrier in the 1800s between the more fertile prairie lands to the east and the drier prairies towards the west. Right. So obviously, this region is more fertile and there's lots of rain here. As you go towards the west, you see that the land is less and less fertile. And so this area, the cross timbers, lies right between those. Also known as the Osage Plains, it is the southernmost of the three tall grass prairies. All right, so the next area that we're going to describe is the South Plains. And the South Plains region lies towards the south of Texas near the Rio Grande River. The South Texas brush country, brush country is characterized by plains of thorny shrubs and trees and scattered patches of palms and subtropical woodlands in the Rio Grande Valley. And as you can see, the Rio Grande River runs at the southern border of Texas. And so this is right next to the Rio Grande. The average annual rainfall of 20 to 32 inches and increases from west to the east. Livestock grazing, crop production are the principal agricultural land uses. So that is all about the southern Texas plains. Let's move on to the next region, that is the Edwards Plateau. Now, Edwards Plateau region comprises an area of central Texas, commonly known as the Texas Hill Country. Right, so this area is coming all the way from the Pecos region, the River Pecos here, all the way up to like the Austin area or the hill country area that is right, the central part of Texas. And so Edwards Plateau is that region um, and it is the land of many springs, springs, underwater springs, uh, stony hills and steep canyons. Average, average annual rainfall ranges from 15 to 34 inches. So rainfall is slowing down from as we come from the east part of Texas. Elevations range from slightly less than 100 feet to over 3,000 feet above sea level. Now you can see that the, we're beginning to see much higher elevations as we move towards western parts of Texas, especially western part of the central Texas, you see these high elevations. Now the limestone of the Edwards Plateau is honeycombed with thousands of caves. And you can go visit some of these caves um, in this region. Beneath the eastern edge of the plateau lies a hidden world of underground lakes known as the Edwards Aquifer. So there is a there's an aquifer underground lake that um, is also in this region. And when you visit Austin area, you can visit these these lakes. 
um, or you can't visit the underground lakes, but somewhere, you know, the water is accessible, uh, like the Barton Springs and so on, you can see that really cold water is available, even in the summer times. All right. So the next region is the rolling plains. Now we are reaching uh, the northern part, uh, the panhandle part of Texas. Several Texas rivers begin the gentle rolling hills and the broad flats of the rolling plains. These rivers begin in the gently rolling hills. These rivers and the numerous tributaries are responsible for the rolling character of the land. The rivers have cut canyons that shelter some plants and animals typical of the Rocky Mountains. The average annual rainfall is 20 to 28 inches, so rainfall is beginning to decrease. Elevations vary from 800 to 3,000 feet above the sea level, very similar of the Edwards Plateau that we saw. Much of the rolling plains uh, today can be described as a mesquite short grass savanna. So there is, it's a savanna, so there is definitely some grasslands and some trees scattered. So that is all about the rolling plains. Next up is the high plains. And the high plains also, as you can see in a different picture, is part of the Great Plains system. The high plains region together with the rolling plains comprise the southern end of the Great Plains of the central United States. Like I said earlier, this is the Great Plains. And, um, and so that's fairly important when you, when you watch videos about Texas or somebody's describing the weather, they will refer to the Great Plains of Texas uh, or the High Plains of Texas. And that's what they're talking about in the Panhandle. The High Plains is relatively level high plateau separated from the Rolling Plains by the Cap Rock, Cap Rock Escarpment. Elevations range from 3,000 to 4,500 feet above the sea level. Now you can see we are going beyond the 3,000 uh, feet above sea level. And so that's much, much higher. An average annual rainfall is 15 to 22 inches. So rainfall again is decreasing and the elevations rising as you go towards this part of the panhandle. All right, so next up is going to be the final region of the great state of Texas, and that's gonna be Transpecus. The Transpecus region is the westernmost. So just like we had the piney woods, the easternmost, now we are in Transpecus, which is the westernmost uh, part or section, geographic section of Texas. It's located west of the Pecos River and is part of the Chihuahuan Desert, one of the largest deserts in North America. This is the region of diverse habitats and vegetation varying from desert valleys, plateaus, to wooded mountain slopes. Elevations range from 2,500 feet to more than 87, 49 feet at Guadalupe Peak. So that is the highest that we have seen so far in the great state of Texas, 87, 49 feet of elevation. And so that is um, the last section, geographic section that we wanted to talk about today. And so I would like to thank you if you've been here all this long. Thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And I'll see you in another video. Until then, take care and bye-bye.